Hey everyone, GW Smallwood, The Shaving Disciple, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to glue a shaving brush knot into a shaving brush handle. So if you want to buy a custom shaving brush, a lot of times they'll come with their own knots, but there's typically a limited selection of shaving brush knots that you can get with a certain vendor. So if you want to buy a different style knot and set it into your own handle, I'm going to show you how to do that today. So first let's talk about what you need to do this. So obviously the first thing you need is a shaving brush handle. So there are lots of places you can go these days to get a custom shaving brush handle or semi-custom. So you can go with a completely custom like this one from Turn and Shave that Milton made for me to my own specifications. Um, it's kind of his handle shape but I picked out the colors and picked the handle shape that I want. You can go with a vendor like Chisel and Hound or Wild West Brushworks. Those are vendors that make their brushes to their own specifications but they're still uh, one-off extremely custom handles. Or you can go kind of the more mass-produced, ready-made, ready-to-order route with vendors such as AP Shave Co or Shave Forge um, or even you can go look at a lot of the Chinese vendors over at AliExpress. So the next thing you need is a shaving brush knot. Now I tend to prefer synthetic knots, so almost every brush I own is a synthetic, uh, but you can go with badger, you can go with boar, you can go with horsehair. There's a wide variety of options when it comes to knots these days. So you just kind of have to figure out what you want. And once you do, again, there are tons of different vendors out there. There's AP Shave Co., there's Turn and Shave, there's Maggard. Again, you can go to some of the Chinese vendors directly over at AliExpress. Douglas Smythe over at Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements recently started selling his brush knots uh, standalone. He does all synthetics and he just started selling his as knot only, so you can buy some from them. So the next thing you're going to need is some sort of a glue. So for this brush, I'm going to be using this silicone. So this is just GE Clear Waterproof Zil Silicone. Um, there are a couple of different varieties that work fine. Uh, this is actually my first time using silicone, so this is the one I picked up based on some recommendations. You can also use two-part epoxy, which is something I've done on all of my previous brushes. So this works very, very well for a permanent knot setting. You are going to need some sort of a tool to stir and apply your glue. And you are very likely going to need some sort of a spacer. Now the other things that are handy to have but aren't necessarily requirements are a rubber band. I'll show you why in a few minutes here. You need a little paper clip or something if you've got previously used epoxy to open it up. You might need a pair of scissors to open it up if the paper clip doesn't work. This is going to come in very handy, a uh, digital measurement tool. If you ha have never done this before and you are trying to figure out what your handle diameter is and what size brush knot you're, you're wanting. These come in very, very handy. You're going to need some sort of a cloth to wipe up any excess adhesive. And then the last thing you'll see in a minute why is painter's tape can come in very, very handy. So when picking out your handle and your knot, um, you need to know what the inside diameter of your hole is and what the outside diameter of your knot is. So again, that's where this comes in handy. I had this custom made and I specifically asked for a one inch drill on this. So this is just over an inch. And I asked for that because I wanted to use a 24 millimeter knot. So typically you want to buy a knot that is one to two millimeters advertised larger than the hole. Now you don't always get exactly what you need. Sometimes you'll buy a knot that's advertised at 24 where it's actually closer to 25 and you bought a brush handle that was advertised to accept a 24 millimeter knot but it's really really tight and it won't work sometimes. Um, that's just part of putting your own brush knots in. Sometimes you gotta order a couple of different knots for the handle to get it to work right. But again that's where measuring beforehand can really come in handy. Now the reason that you need one to two millimeters extra width on the hole diameter is because when you get one of these advertised at 24 millimeter, as you can see, it gets wider 
as the fibers leave this glue plug down at the bottom here. And you don't want to set this too high because obviously you don't want that glue plug visible. So when you set the knot, you want it to be set one or two millimeters at least. Some people like to set them deeper, uh, but you want it at least one or two millimeters deeper than the depth of that, that glue plug. That way you're not seeing any of the glue plug outside of your shaving brush. All right, so let's go ahead and adjust the camera angle and we'll get to the main business of gluing the knot in. Okay, so once you have your handle and your knot and you know that the knot fits in the handle, the next step is to dry fit the knot in the handle. Now what that means is you don't want to just fill up this entire hole with epoxy. It's going to be messy and you're not, not going to sit very level. So what you want to do is you want to put spacers in there to take up that extra room. So now that you know you need some sort of a spacer in here, what are you going to use? So in the past, I've used coins. So particularly if you've got a one inch hole, uh, which is pretty typical size for a 24 millimeter brush knot. A quarter works perfectly. So you can see that fill up, fills up the hole nicely, but it does leave a tiny bit of room for the epoxy to rise up to sides um, or the silicone. So this is what I've used in the past. So I've chosen not to use these going forward for a very good reason. So Rudy Vey, who is a very well-known and renowned brush maker, brought up a good point on a shaving forum. Uh, he mentioned that when you set your knots using metal, whether it be quarters or nickels or metal washers like this one, the problem with that is if you ever sell this brush or 10 years down the road you decide you want to replace the knot in it, if you don't remember that there's metal in there, when somebody goes to re-knot this, they're going to likely take a very large drill bit and start drilling in. And when it bites this metal, it is very likely to damage the handle. So if you want a better shot at your handle being preserved through a brush rest restoration, you're better off to use something like this. So these are simple nylon or plastic washers. Um, you can get them at your local hardware store. They sell them in kits on Amazon. They come in different sizes, different diameters, different thicknesses. So once you have an assortment of spacers picked out, the next step is to dry fit your brush knot. So ideally, you wanna pick the number of spacers that gets you to the feel you want on the knot. So some people like a really deep set knot, in which case they can just take and force the brush down into the hole, which compresses the bristles on the knot and makes it very very dense and it makes it very very stiff and if you'll notice it doesn't splay the the knot isn't nearly as spread out as it was before so this isn't the way I like mine some people like their brushes like this if that's the case you can certainly just put the epoxy down in the bottom or the silicone and shove the knot all the way in there. Like I said, you're going to get a much stiffer, much stiffer brush when you do it that way. So what I like to do is I like to set mine so that it's only about a millimeter or two below the plug there. So I want, I want none of the plug showing and I want the brush to sit as naturally as possible in the hole so that it doesn't squeeze it at all. So basically what you do is you get a variety of these washers in different thicknesses and you kind of play around with them until you get the fit you want. So this is one washer that's pretty thick. I still need to push this brush down to get it in. That's not what I'm looking for. So add another one. See how that works. So I still have to push a little bit here, but it's not much. If I go to a third, then I'm sitting directly on it, 
but as you can see it only takes a little bit of movement for that plug to start showing and when I put the epoxy in here it's going to take up a little bit of extra room it's going to give you a little bit more thickness so for me with this particular brush I'm settling with this right here I'm going to use two of these washers two different types for this particular knot now I mentioned the painters tape so this is a little trick I learned from Peter Wolf over at Wolf Whiskers watching one of his videos um, he's one of one of the original artisan brush makers um, one of the best in the business and this is what he kind of does to mix up his epoxy for his brushes makes cleanup easy you just kind of lift the corner of the tape and pull it all away and throw it in the trash so before you start actual gluing one of the things you want to make sure and do is clean out the inside of this hole so I've already done that uh, but basically just warm water and a toothbrush and scrub it up a little bit make sure there's no leftover resin shavings or anything in there that are gonna keep the adhesive from sticking properly some people actually recommend going in with a fine grit uh, sandpaper and sanding the bottom and the sides a little bit um, I've never done that on any of my brushes and mine have all been just fine so I prefer to keep the sandpaper away from the smooth finish of my brush um, I do not trust myself enough to go in there with the sandpaper now the next thing you want to do before you get started is I'm going to take a rubber band and wrap it around your brush knot now sometimes this is helpful when you're doing the dry fitting as well because it'll help you more clearly see the depth at which you want to set your knot uh, but again I prefer to do my dry fitting with the bristles loose so that I know I'm not setting it too deeply so as you can see that now sits flat on that without me having to force it and hold it down in there alright so now we need to open up the silicone this is actually the first time I'm using silicone um, I've always used epoxy in the past but silicone actually makes it a lot easier to remove the knot if you ever want to in the future so I mentioned a lot of people like their knots set really really deeply some people like them set a little bit higher some people aren't quite sure so what silicone allows you to do is if you want to only try it with one spacer first put the silicone in if you don't like it then all it takes is a really firm pull and twist and that knot will pop right back out it'll it'll remove that silicone then you can go in and just scrape away all that residual silicone add a new layer add an extra spacer and go to town again you can't do that with epoxy the epoxy is permanent in order to get that brush knot out you've either got to steam it which risks damage to the handle or you've got to cut it out and then drill and sand out the hole which is why I'm going to attempt some silicone this time so from what I've read on the forums um, lots and lots of people have had brushes for five plus years with a single silicone setting that are just fine the knot has remained firmly in place so it's been a long time since I've used this particular silicone so we're gonna see if we can get it opened up here alright so I'm gonna squirt a little bit of the silicone right into the handle here and I'm gonna start with less than I think I need um, you can start with whichever diameter washer you want I'm sm starting with the slightly smaller one to give my knot kind of a wider base to sit on so I'm going to start by putting that guy in there and I'm going to just kind of move it around a little bit make sure that that particular washer has plenty of adhesive on the bottom I think I actually need a little bit more in there before I move on to the next washer So you want to try and keep it from getting up on the 
top edges. Want to make sure you got it all down in the hole there. Okay, and that's what that looks like first. So I'm going to pour some more epoxy in there and get it ready for the second washer. And use your spreading utensil to make sure you got all the space in there covered. Okay. Drop in your second washer. Make sure it's kind of down in there all the way. Now you can go one or two routes here. You can go heavy on the epoxy knowing that there's a big hole in there that needs to be filled up with epoxy. Or you can do like me, I tend to go a little bit lighter and fill in as I need. And of course, you see I just got it on the edge of my brush there, which is what your rag comes in handy for. Okay, need a little bit more in there and then I'll, we can put the knot down in there. Okay, so the last step is you want to put your knot down in there, make sure it's setting solidly, and then do a twist or two to make sure that epoxy or the adhesive, whatever adhesive you're using, gets spread out well. So I can already see a little bit coming up on one side there. That's what your rag's for. You want to make sure that doesn't get on your bristles of your brush. So you don't want to push too hard. You just want a firm press. And then you're going to let it sit. Now I tend to let mine sit and dry for a good 24 hours. I've never used the silicone before, so I may let this set 48 just to be absolutely sure with this one. Uh, usually 24 hours is more than enough though. So we'll come back and take another shot after it's fully dried. Okay, so it's been about 24 hours and this is what we've got. So as you can see, it's in there pretty solid displays nicely knot isn't moving at all so that is what you get after about 24 hours so you can see there's no visible silicone um, around the edge of the knot really which is what you're going for you want just enough to get the knot to stay without it overflowing the handle so the last step in this process is to clean your shaving brush. So I've already made a video on cleaning your shaving brush so I'm not going to show you guys the full routine here but I use Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements brush cleaner. So these brushes do come usually directly from China with the manufacturing process that could leave them with chemicals and stuff in them so it's a good idea to just wash your brush clean it good before you use it for the first time So that is how you glue in a shaving brush knot.